Live from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering Big Data New York City 2016. Brought to you by headline sponsors, Cisco, IBM, NVIDIA, and our ecosystem sponsors. Now, here's your host, Dave Vellante. We're back in New York City. This is day four of Big Data NYC. We run Big Data NYC concurrent to Strata plus Hadoop World. This is the seventh year that theCUBE has been at Hadoop World. Uh, Peter Burris is here with me, Jeff Frick, and we have a special guest, Avi Mehta is here. He's the founder and CEO of Tr Traseda. Avi, it was great, what a surprise, seeing you oh, pop thank in. You, Dave. Boom, always for the, I always at the you, ready. I gave you forewarning yesterday, <laughs> but yes. I right, I tweeted you, I said stop by, you did. Absolutely. Perfect, <laughs> perfect timing, could have been Thank you better. for having me, as always. So, you're welcome, and, and uh, you know, down memory lane, John Furrier and I remember our, our first Hadoop World, which was the second uh, ever, Hadoop, ever World. Hadoop World. You were our top guest that time, and you've continued to be one of our top guests. So. Thank you. You know, so take us back, well, seven years ago. Yes. You were at B of A and you were sort of educating us all on what this Hadoop thing was, knowing that there was something else coming, yes. so. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of good things coming. Yeah, like so. a lost leader or bait and switch? Which one is that? No, <laughs> neither. <laughs> it was a foretelling the future. It is refreshing to see, first of all, not just the success that the communities had, success all of us have had, because I remember the cube, you know, the desk of two, <laughs> there was no tablecloth uh, at the time. Uh, but it's just refreshing to see that we have built successfully Traseda, the cube, and a complete community on open source, uh, a technology that we had said at the time will revolutionize the world, the business world, not the technology world. And, all of the, and seeing those predictions come true uh, is very, very fulfilling because not, we can, we, it's always bad to be early and a fool, but it's really good to be early and right. <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, it's really good to see the success of the, of the community at large. I don't think even with our uh, confidence that this new tech revolution will, ena will enable an industrial revolution like none other, it is, I would not have predicted how big it would become so quickly, because seven years, in tech life is, uh, you know, is uh, seven minutes. Well, I think it's gone totally mainstream, but what do you make of the, the semi-backlash, right? People writing about how, you know, big data hasn't lived up to the promises, people struggling, the ecosystem is Not so people, complex. Not just people, us. Especially <laughs> Peter. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you make of that, right? The, the, the ecosystem is fragmented, complexity, yet another project. You know, Cloudera and Hortonworks struggle to keep up with all the, you know, committers. You know, they're, nobody's making any money except maybe you guys. Yes, pr pretty much. <laughs> I, go, I like to take a step back, Dave, like I think we do so well, and look at the big picture. And I think the big picture at least continues to inform me and embolden me personally, and then to see it as a company, around what would the emerging business models be? I think that's the question, right? I think that's what Peter, and I love talking to Peter because he challenges me, and I, like, I love getting challenged. I think we, what we haven't discussed enough is what will the emerging business models be not just for industry, but for technology. So if I take a step back and I go back to our original prediction, second industrial revolution, data is the new fuel, and it'll be trillions of dollars of value. We had said seven years ago that this revolution will be trillions of dislocation, not billions, right? Mm. And we're absolutely right. So if you look back at that concept of an industrial revolution, all revolutions are fueled by three main things. Technology, talent, and tools. In every revolution that the world has seen, you can this be the second or third, doesn't really matter, you can never charge for technology. Technology by its very nature to fuel a revolution has to be free, has to be open, and easily available. And what we are seeing early on in this phase is the, the, the technology powering the revolution, people are struggling to make money on, as you should. Because where the money sits in revolutions, and if you remember the gold rush in California, you didn't make money digging for gold, you made money selling shovels. So when you think about what powers revolutions, the tools and, and the talent are yet to emerge. Because it's hard. It's hard to figure out the tooling using technology on where the value will be added. So technology is going to be free. It's plentiful. The technology has to be, it's plentiful, it has to be open, the standards have to be set, which I think the, the ecosystem has done a really good job with those, with those dynamics of technology, right. but you can't make money in revolutions on technology. The money sits in tools and talent, and that's where we have been successful. We were very early on at said that Traceda will not commercialize any technology 
that should be the foundation or utilitarian in nature. So whether it's databases, security, algorithms, algorithms yeah. they're all free, right? We have, we've said it publicly yeah, many times before. But the combination of all of them and the tools to enable automation of anti-money laundering, automation of population health, automation of self-driving cars and transportation, that's where the money sits. And we haven't yet seen the emergence in the technology industry of the tools. That is where the commercialization will, and the rubber will hit the road. Because in technology, you know, and I love, it's very hard to make money in open source, if not impossible. Mm. Only one company has proven it, Red Hat. Red Hat of everything. Red Hat of everything. <laughs> and my prediction, since day zero has been, in fact, we actually discussed it seven years ago. Yeah. You'd ask me what happens to the, to the Hadoop ecosystem, which is the player you want to see emerge. And I said, Red Hat should be the player. Yeah. And I think we may yet see that. Yeah, Red Hat <laughs> yeah. will be the Red Hat of, uh -huh. of Hadoop <laughs> big as well. Data, yeah. Or big data, yeah, exactly, <laughs> Hadoop, or whatever the technology yeah. trend yeah. may be. But we have to remember that industrial evolutions by its very nature, the underlying technology is utilitarian in its use and cannot be commercialized. But it, well, the, other thing, well, the other thing we said was that the practitioners are the gonna, we're gonna make the trillions. Absolutely. Right? Right? Your customers Absolutely. are really the ones that are really Absolutely. gonna drive a lot of the value. Because every single business model will be redone. We, we entered healthcare six months ago. So now we've got the, the, the perfect storm for Crusader, right? <laughs> we had wealth figured out, we have health figured out, what else is to worry about in humanity, right? So the two biggest things in humanity, well, health and wealth, wealth. And the wealth is going yeah. into the, uh, and the, the wealth is going into the all the money, the money shift. <laughs> but, but, to, but to your point, both, so I'm sorry, my apologies, okay. but to your point, every single healthcare model will get redone. Every single banking model, every single uh, transportation, telecommunications, uh, retail will get redone on the fundamentals of those three things, technology, talent and tools. And I think the people who create the tools will be incredibly successful and make a lot of money. But, but the difference between evolution and revolution yes. is what? The leaders get knocked out. Yes, of course they And do. so you, you said yeah. revolution many, many times. And yet we're, we're seeing some of the old incumbents try to make the move so they don't kick that. I mean, last night at the, at the IBM thing, or two nights ago, Pichiano said, we're going to innovate at the speed of open source. Mm -hmm. Wow, who would have thought that seven years ago? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Rich I mean, Rich he, led, he led this incredible presentation. Uh, you've been really the, quiet the, here, Peter. Nature I nature event I, with that I'm statement. I'm taking it all in. <laughs> um, so, so look, I think, I think uh, first of all, I don't, I don't fundamentally disagree with most of what you're saying. Um, but if we put it in perspective of what's happening right now. Yes. Uh, first off, um, the, the whole thing, the, the thing you're really saying is talent, technology, and tools all boil down to, once you develop the intellectual property, how does it get commercialized? Because all three of them represent intellectual property. A Absolutely. technology is a codification of intellectual property. A tool is a codification of a method, intellectual property. You determine whether or not somebody has talent based on whether or not they can enact mm -hmm. the intellectual property. Agreed. So it's all intellectual property. Agreed. So really what you're saying is that technology, intellectual property, is which is the infrastructure, which is the baseline pieces. And, and we'll see, I mean, we're still gonna see people make money. Agreed. But we're talking about, if we're talking about, as you said, and I don't think you're too far off, you know, a 30 trillion, 40 trillion dollar well, economy, yeah, whatever exa it is. Exactly. And we're talking about in the next 10 years, some percentage of that being disrupted, mm -hmm. and probably more than a trillion when you come right yes. down to it, yes. that we're not gonna see 500 billion of that end up in technology companies. Correct. But we will see tens and twenties and fifties and maybe even hundred billions of dollars uh, end up in technology companies. Completely agree. But the vast majority will be in the tooling because the tooling is how we diffuse the intellectual property that we create with talent. Correct. And so if we think about what's got to happen, and our basic thesis right now about open source is actually quite simple. Um, and we had, we had some people on who kind of vehemently disagreed with us and put their fists up at me, but you know, it's, That's we'll a good see thing. what happens. Yeah. <laughs> We're sticking to it. But the, uh, <laughs> but the bottom line is that in the historical open source model, you had, uh, you had a, at least, let's talk about Linux. In yeah, the Linux model, mm, right. you had millions of people who understood what Unix was. Right. Significant experience about the use case of a Unix operating system. Very comfortable system. with adopting Linux. Exactly. So they were they more than happy. They didn't need a lot of help. They, they didn't need a lot of help and they were more than happy to underwrite the diffusion prop is the intellectual property associated with Linux. Mm -hmm. Same thing with JBoss. And, uh, and, and, and a billion dollars from IBM helped too, back and when a billion, billion dollars was really a lot of money. Yes. But here's the challenge. Was a lot of here's money. the challenge. And my, my concern, <laughs> our concern, because we agree, we think that this is an incredibly important undertaking, and we think we'll get through it. Mm -hmm. But there's a rough patch right now because of the presumption that there are similarly 
large numbers of individuals with talent. There was talent in the Unix world, there's not as much talent in the big data world. And so the open source model is struggling because it doesn't fund that approach to how you diffuse that intellectual property because the tools aren't there yet. They're getting there. And Peter, you just reinforced my point. I com by the way, I completely agree with you. Everything, you and, and I'm, I'm glad that people are holding back their punches or not holding back their punches because the very nature of dislocations we are undergoing a massive dislocation. This is Galapagos for technology. Because the biggest thing technology was built on the last 50 years is under threat. Every single thing that I, I at least, you know, you are younger than I am, Dave, at least I, you know, <laughs> built my career on. It's funny too. Storage, databases, <laughs> analytical tools, visualization or BI is up for grabs. Because fundamentally, and I offer a small edit to what Mark Andreessen said, software will lead the world. I see open source software will lead the world. Utilitarian pieces or utilitarian um, uh, uh, revolution, utilitarian parts of the revolution have to, have to live on very thin margins. So yes, will there be billions in the technology layer of the next revolution? Absolutely. Will it be a high margin, high profit business? No, it won't. It's not supposed to be. Because what you're doing with technology and building in technology is highly capital intensive to feed and fuel a revolution, whether you want, whether you want to call it you know, uh, laying down the, 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 the train tracks for tool vendors to, to live on, that just takes time. The reason on talent changes. So I've said this multiple times, three big parts of the large GDP, any global GDP economic system, agriculture, manufacturing, and services. Whenever a tier of our economic system got machined, it moved to the next tier. It's been 50 years since we had our last large machining. It was called manufacturing automation. What we are seeing is the beginnings of a service industry automation. So the talent problem will not get solved by adding more people or just retraining them. It will get solved with what we call a, a twist on AI, augment, an augmented intelligence, whether, almost like an augmented human being. We will have things that will make someone as smart as Dave even smarter dramatically increase productivity by automating simple, incredibly utilitarian and common sense tasks. It started already, right? Oh, yeah. Email, calendar, uh, reminders for birthdays. Airport I, I tell, kiosks. Airport right. kiosks. <laughs> but but see, we, here's where we've got to be careful about this. And, and, and we, I know we don't, we've got to be a little bit careful about time. This would be a great, great topic to continue at some point in time. At, at the end of the day, Dave's, the determination of how smart Dave is, is still a relative determination. Of course it when is. When everybody has access to the same tools, everybody gets picked, everybody is lifted. Absolutely. And so this is my concern about the whole notion of automation. We will automate certain tasks, but those tasks will be automated for everybody, and everybody's going to get a chance to pick up their game. Wait, you know what, maybe I'm, a, I'm the glass, always the glass half full guy, but I look at, oh, actually, I mean, this is not even a glass anymore, this is a cauldron, you know, of, <laughs> of just immense innovation. I call it, I look at the other side of it and say, if we are able to lift humanity's intelligence, oh, look, humanity's productivity, we are going to see a renaissance. We are going to be able to solve problems, problems have, that have, have, have been never intractable been exactly. since time immemorial. That's our, the most, that's that the That excites line. me. And it's, a, and it's a renaissance that our kids will live in an era of wealth and health, sorry, I keep going back to the same thing, that we can only imagine today. And it excites me. It excites me to, to look at Trusada as a player that can enable it. We are very early, by the way, because even we can't comprehend today. If open source becomes this massive platform that can enable tool and, tools and talent to collectively raise the bar, right? A rising tide lifts all boats. This is going to be a, a, uh, a creation of, of uh, economic wealth like never before. Not just money, but economic, true social economic wealth. And I'm very excited about and, it. And humans will be part of that. We have to go, but I'll, I'll close with the, the story of Gary Kasparov when he lost to the, the supercomputer, to yeah. Deep Blue. Instead of you know, giving up, he said, I'm going to beat the computer. And how he did it was he got his own supercomputer and he put it together with humans. Exactly. And now each year they get together and there's a, you know, a contest, right? And the, the best chess player in the world is not a computer. It's a human it plus a computer. Because, I think to just to my last point on that, that's why I think AI needs to be redefined as augmented intelligence, not artificial. Nothing about this revolution is artificial. It's very real. It's very human. We have to remember big data is about making life easier and better and cheaper and faster and more, more prolific for human beings. 
And we forget that in these technology conversations we have. Because the technology is going to be free and massive and, and, and a standardized way, in a utilitarian way that we haven't seen before. But if we forget how can we solve problems and make human life better, our motto at Crusader, we updated it three years ago, is enrich life. That's what I want to be known for. I don't want to be known for outthinking somebody. I don't want to be known for you know, creating ways to go into water vapor. I want to be known for enriching life. And that's our motto and mission. Hey, thanks so much, my friend, for stopping by. It's Absolutely. Really a Thank pleasure. you for having me. Always a, always a blast. You're, You're welcome. All right. This is theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. We'll be right back. Making life better. NYC, right after this word. Thank <laughs> you.